In this video, we're going to be investigating displacement reactions. A displacement reaction is... A reaction in which a more reactive element takes the place of a less reactive element in one of its compounds or in solution. How do we know if an element is more reactive? Well, we can use the reactivity series. Now this isn't the reactivity series, this is a pseudonym I use to remember the reactivity series. Each of the first letters of the words in the pseudonym represents an element. Now the reactivity series is ordered from most reactive at the top to least reactive at the bottom, and most of them in the reactivity series are metals. And now I'll write the element that each letter represents. So the most reactive element in the reactivity series is potassium at the top and the least reactive is platinum at the bottom. We're going to use the reactivity series to write the products of these three reactions. So the first one is sodium plus iron sulfate. Sodium and iron are in the reactivity series and we can see that sodium is more reactive than iron. So sodium is going to displace iron from its compound iron sulfate. So the products are going to be sodium sulfate and iron. The next one, we can see that there is copper and lead. And copper is lower in the reactivity series than lead. So there will be no reaction. And the last one, we have zinc and tin oxide, and we can see that zinc is higher than tin in the reactivity series. So the products will be zinc oxide and tin. Next, we're going to investigate displacement reactions. Put a tick or a cross in each box to show if there's a chemical reaction taking place or not. Into the first row here, I'm going to add magnesium metal. Into the second row, I'm going to add some copper metal. Into the third row, I'm going to add some iron metal. And into the fourth row, I'm going to add some zinc metal. The first solution we're going to add is magnesium sulfate. And as you can see, there are no reactions occurring. The next one we're going to add to the metals is the copper sulfate. And as you can see, the magnesium is reacting with the copper sulfate. There's lots of fizzing and bubbling there. The copper is not reacting with copper sulfate. And the iron is reacting with the copper sulfate. I can see a few bubbles, but it's happening very slowly. And you can see that the zinc has reacted with the copper sulfate because the zinc has discolored. The next one we're going to add is iron sulfate. Instantly you can see a reaction there. There's lots of fizzing and bubbling. Doesn't seem to be any reaction with the copper or the iron. And there does seem to be a very, very slow reaction happening with the zinc and the iron sulfate. There are some bubbles forming, it's just very, very slow. The last solution we're going to add is the zinc sulfate. Straight away we can see a reaction happening with the magnesium. No reaction with the copper. No reaction with the iron and no reaction with the zinc. It's been a few minutes and we can see that there is a reaction happening with the copper sulfate and the iron. 
you can see that the iron is starting to turn an orange color, an orange brown color. So we have some deposits of copper there. It's just a very slow reaction. I've given the zinc some more time to react and as you can see there is a definite reaction with the copper sulfate and zinc and the iron sulfate and zinc. But there doesn't seem to be any reaction with the zinc and zinc sulfate and the zinc and magnesium sulfate. Here are the answers, like the video if you got them all correct.